Hello everyone, welcome back again to Plexus uh, Theory to Shallow Foundation course from uh, theory to practice. Uh, this is uh, lesson 36 and in this uh, tutorial we are going to investigate the behavior of foundation or single footing on a rock uh, material using a Hoek Brown constitutive model in Plexus uh, 3D. So uh, this is our uh, geometry of the soil and foundation which we are going to model in Plexus uh, 3D. The foundation uh, is uh, 2 meter by 2 meter is a reinforced concrete foundation but in this tutorial we are going to uh, model one quarter of uh, the geometry of the foundation and of the soil. So our uh, soil geometry and foundation is going to be uh, like this one. Uh, also, uh, I will uh, shortly talk about the Hoek Brown constructive model in Plexus uh, 3D. Uh, this uh, advanced uh, constructive model used uh, for uh, simulation the behavior of uh, rock in uh, Plexus uh, 3D. Generally, uh, the parameters of uh, the Hoek Brown constructive models are listed in here. Uh, these are the general parameters. Uh, the first one is uh, sigma si, which is <coughs> sorry, which is a uniaxial uh, compressive strength, uh, which is a uniaxial compressive uh, strength of intact rock, and uh, this parameter can be calculated and determined in the laboratory uh, when we have a laboratory uh, experimental data. Also, it can be uh, estimated from uh, the literature when uh, we don't have uh, any data. Also, uh, the other parameter is material constant, which is M sub I. Uh, this parameter also uh, can be found in the literature, also in uh, Plexus, it easily can be uh, calculated. Uh, I will uh, show you later when we. Uh, define the material in plexus and this parameter is der derived from the properties of the intact rock and the degree of fracturing. Also uh, we have the geological strength index which is GSI and uh, it is a parameter that reflects the condition of the rock mass in terms of blockness and surf uh, surface uh, conditions so it can be uh, determined according the surface and blockness of uh, the rock uh, and uh, we will uh, talk about this one also in uh, plexus and it can be also uh, determined uh, in many uh, geological uh, textbooks or in uh, the literature also we have a disturbance factor which is uh, a symbol as a d and uh, this factor accounts for the degree of disturbance or damage to the rock mass and it is usually uh, important when analyzing the tunnel or uh, the slope stability. We will also talk about this uh, factor as well. Also the other parameters such as elasticity and poison ratios are required when uh, simulating uh, uh, a rock using Hoek Brown constitutive model in uh, Plexus uh, 3D. Okay, uh, I will also uh, mentioned uh, so by the way uh, the rock which we are going to uh, simulate in uh, this example we assume it is a limestone uh, rock so uh, i will shortly talk about the parameters like elasticity and uh, poison ratios and uh, strength of uh, this uh, type of rock how can we uh, estimate if we don't have any data so uh, I uh, talk these tables from uh, some uh, textbooks. I will also uh, mention uh, the uh, title of this books in the uh, lesson. So, for example, uh, for the limestone, we can uh, assume the poison ratios based on this table. For example, for limestone, uh, it is between 0 0.1 to 0 0.33 according to this reference. Also, it is about uh, 0 0.27 to 0 0.30 according to uh, this uh, reference. Also, if we don't have the uniaxial compressive uh, strength from the laboratory, we can uh, estimate based on this table 
for example uh, for limestone or marble uh, which is a strong roll it can be estimated or uh, uh, say the value between uh, 50 to 100 kilonewton per uh, square or megapascal sorry 50 to uh, 100 uh, megapascal okay also the elasticity of uh, the rock or limestone can be estimated from uh, this relationship and uh, these tables in the literature so uh, the modulus or the modulus ratio we call uh, the elasticity of uh, the rock divided by the uniaxial compressive uh, strength of uh, the rock so uh, for example we have a limestone and we assume uh, the texture of uh, the limestone is a medium so we choose uh, the modulus ratio as uh, 800 uh, 800 so based on uh, this relationship we can estimate the elasticity of uh, the rock as well and i think right now it is ready for calculation so we start uh, calculation we click on calculate Okay, as we can see the calculation is finished, we save the project again and we can see the calculation results by clicking on view calculation results. So we can see uh, this is a uh, deformed shape of uh, the problem. In here we can uh, see how the foundation and uh, soil get deformed. Uh, after applying the load if we deactivate the surface load we can uh, see it more clearly also the maximum uh, deformation or displacement uh, in uh, this example is about uh, 0 0.1 15 millimeters it is uh, less than one uh, centimeter actually so we can also check uh, the total uh, displacement in z direction like this one we can see this uh, deformed or displacement contours this is the displacement isobars also we can see the displacement uh, vectors we can also check the cartesian uh, stresses in z direction we can see in here also we can uh, see the load displacement curve at the center of the foundation and export the data to Excel so we click on a uh, curve manager and click on new so in X direction as usual we uh, select M stage and in Y direction we choose uh, the point which we uh, selected before and expand the deformation total displacement 
also the displacement in uh, z direction and we right, right click on the figure and deactivate the first and the uh, second stage ok and as we can see this is a low displacement curve for uh, the foundation on a uh, limestone rock and we can click on table control plus a and control plus c to export uh, this data to excel so i open lesson uh, 36 uh, maybe in here i can create an excel spreadsheet so we open it we copy the data in here we change to general we don't need actually we don't need this uh, to column and we can make a new column for load which is kilonewton per per square meter also another column for the settlement which is in millimeter okay and uh, we multiply the m stage by 3500 uh, 3, kilonewton per square meter also we multiply the uz by 1000 millimeter to convert it from meter to millimeters so we can see the displacement is about 0 0.15 millimeter and we can make a load displacement curve for for uh, and also we can uh, make a load displacement curve for this data and we can do some changes in this figure okay we delete this title and we can see that uh, the maximum uh, settlement for uh, this amount of load which is uh, 3500 kilonewton per square meter is about uh, 0 0.16 millimeters because uh, it is a rock and has a very high uh, strength properties also we can increase uh, this amount of load uh, until we get uh, a failure load until uh, the soil or the rock uh, get failure in plexus and we can estimate the ultimate bearing capacity of uh, this uh, kind of rock so in this example we can say uh, this uh, amount of load is safe because uh, the settlement is in the acceptable range uh, we have another criteria because in some kind of rock maybe we get a very high uh, bearing capacity of load so also we have the concrete uh, strength for example if we have the fc dash of uh, the concrete uh, 25 megapascal also if uh, <coughs> sorry if we get a q ultimate for uh, the rock maybe 50 megapascal so in uh, this case we have to be uh, very careful and we have to choose we have to uh, select the strength of a concrete as uh, ultimate bearing capacity because uh, the concrete will get uh, failed before uh, the ultimate bearing capacity of uh, the soil also there are uh, some presumptive bearing capacity of rockers uh, from uh, some uh, practice code and references and uh, it can be assumed when we don't have uh, any data of uh, the rock for example in here uh, for sedimentary rock like uh, cemented shale uh, siltstone or limestone uh, for uh, strength when we have medium to high strength the bearing capacity can be uh, assumed as between 1000 to 4000 kilonewton per uh, square meter 
Okay, uh, this was for uh, this example and I hope it was clear. Uh, thank you for watching. See you in the next lesson.